we've missed it. The last one. Oh. Come on, we'll have to itch. Here, yeah. I'll ask her. Excuse me, do you know when the next bus is? Shouldn't be long. A few minutes. It's Oxford at six, I think. Good. But does it go to Woodstock? Oh, I don't think so. Just to Yarnton. I told you. We've missed it. It'll be all right. We'll soon get a lift. You'll see. <laughs> Bit of skirts what half these blokes are looking for. Come on. Up by the roundabout. they got to slow down there. Come on. It'll be all right. We'll be having a giggle about it in the morning. A right giggle, you see. Oh, Same again. Another one? Why not? Do you? Large scotch. That's one twenty. Yeah. One twenty. Thank you. Uh, oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Don't get out of the way. What the hell? Oh God. Right, let's have a look. We'll need some arc lamps. Inspector Morse. It's Sergeant Lewis, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, what have you done, Lewis? We got all the names and addresses. The landlord kept them here till we arrived. Good. What did you tell them? Murder investigation. Young girl, blonde, here in the car park. You've seen her, sir. Uh, as much as I can in this light. We've moved nothing. I should hope not, Lewis. Seems fairly obvious, sir. Obvious? Now she died. Really? Well, a tire spanner. There, sir. Not behind her head. The murder weapon? Yes, sir. And motive, Lewis. What about that? Sex attack, sir. Evidence, Sergeant? Her clothing, sir. Her blouse is all torn. Yes. Disarranged, that's the word they use, isn't it? So, sir. So, Lewis, I think we'll wait for more light, the post-mortem and forensic. In the meantime, we'll just do the donkey work, shall we? Right, sir. You'll finish with the customers, you say? Yes, sir. And I suppose no one saw anything? I'm afraid not. You believe them? Oh, I think so, sir. Very respectable lot. Really? Yeah, smart place, the Black Prince, sir. Oh, you move in Woodstock society, do you, Lewis? <laughs> Hardly, sir. Not on my pay. No. So our respectable punters have nothing to tell us. No one came forward. Just the barmaid, sir. What? Well, she's not sure, but she thinks she remembers the chap who found the body in here last week with a blonde. Oh, did she now? You were spoken to him, Lewis? No, sir. I thought we'd best wait. Good. Well, thank you, everyone, for their cooperation. And bring our friend along. Where can I see him? The manager's office, sir. Right, Lewis. I'll be waiting. Fourteen down. Three letters. Ah. Come in. I got Sanders outside, sir. Have a look at fourteen down, Lewis. Huh? Good clue, don't you think? Oh, I'm afraid I'm not very awesome on crosswords, sir. Take in bachelor, question mark. It could do. Three letters. Get it? Uh, sorry, but I'm afraid I... Bra. B-R-A. Bachelor, that's B-A, and take is the letter R. Recipe in Latin. Did you ever do Latin, Lewis? No, sir. Do you think I'm wasting your time, Sergeant? Yes, sir. <laughs> Good man. I want you to work with me on this case, Lewis. You do, sir? Now, let's have a word with, uh, Saunders, wasn't it? I didn't touch her, but I knew she was dead. I come straight back in and told the manager. And you'd never seen her before? No. Why don't you tell me the truth, Mr. Saunders? What do you mean? You haven't got a car, have you? No. Do you usually stroll around the courtyard before you go home? I've told you. you think on your own all evening? Not usually. Who are you waiting for? Oh, didn't she show up? No. But she did come, didn't she, in the end? I was on she my came, own! She came, didn't she? She came, and you saw her. You saw her in the courtyard, and she was dead. <laughs> yes. But I Who didn't... was she, Mr. Saunders? Sylvia. Yes. 
Sylvia K. I think a quid, Charlie. You're on. A quid? <laughs> Too good a coincidence to pass up. And at ten to one... Sorry? Three o'clock at Chepstow. Black Prince. Oh, I see. <laughs> but isn't that illegal? Barber. I never studied that side of the law. Uh, how did you get on at Town and Gown Assurance? Well, I spoke to the manager, Mr. Palmer. She'd been there just over a year. Copy typist. And? Nothing, really. No complaints about her work or anything. And the other girls? No particular friends. They didn't know much about her social life. Oh, she had one. Oh? oh? She was a lively one, Sylvia. I'd bet on that. Why, sir? Her room, her clothes. Her mother. Her mother? When I told her, Lewis. Well, she was distraught, of course, but not... Not perhaps entirely surprised. Almost as if she'd feared this. I see. So what have we got? Sylvia finishes at the office on the night at 5 p.m. Gets home soon after 5.30. Leaves the house at roughly 6.30. Somehow she gets to Woodstock and, according to the lab, is sexually assaulted and bludgeoned to death with a car spanner sometime between 7 and 8. Are they sure about rape? Well, you remember her clothing. The buttons ripped off the blouse. It all points to force. What about a weapon? Oh, not much help. It's the manager's. He'd been working on his car earlier. Left the toolkit out beside it. Anyone could have picked up that spanner. The time of death. That lets Sanders out, doesn't it? Oh, almost certainly. It's hardly likely he'd have popped out and bashed her head in and then sat boozing before raising the alarm three hours later. Oh, sir. Uh, but I want him watching. Need to know more about him. Might lead us somewhere. Oh, I see to it, sir. Where do we go from here? Well, somehow she got to Woodstock. We need to know how. I can check with the bus company. Done. No joy. It seems she didn't get the bus. Taxi? Unlikely. She didn't seem the taxi sort. And she'd certainly never phoned for one from home. I've checked that. Well, I don't seem to be much help. How would you get from Oxford to Woodstock, Lewis? By car, sir. Which she didn't have. Left with a friend? You just told me, Lewis, she didn't seem to have many girlfriends. Well, boyfriend, then. I didn't pick her up at home. My mother saw her walking. I see. Which leaves what, Lewis? She must have hitched the lift, sir. Quite. Which is why I must go home and change. Change? I'm putting in a TV appearance tonight, Lewis. Local news. Oh, appealing for witnesses. Anyone who was on the Woodstock Road between 6.40 and 7.15 p.m. on Wednesday, 29th of September. What will you tell them? That we're looking for a very dangerous man who might attack at any time. A killer and a rapist. Now, <clears throat> you get yourself some lunch. Good sandwiches here. Are well, you not having any, sir? Oh, I have to watch my figure. The cameras, you know. You really think he might kill someone else, sir? I very much doubt it. But you said he might attack at any moment. Huh? And if you take my advice, you'll have 50p on Black Prince. Oh, for a place. On the nose, Lewis. On the nose. Oh, yes. Definitely two of them, Inspector. And one was Sylvia Kay? Yes. From that photo you showed me. This other girl. Can you tell us how she spoke? Well, not really, Inspector. She didn't say much. She seemed a bit nervous. Frightened, you mean? Well, more impatient, I'd say. Even excited. I see. I'm sorry, Inspector. I tried to remember it all, but I wasn't taking too much notice of them. Then when I saw you on the television, well, I... You've been a very great help, Mrs. Jarman. Really? I feel a bit silly, really. Silly? Well, I told them the bus didn't go to Woodstock. But when it arrived, it was the Woodstock bus. I remember thinking I'd be embarrassed if we passed them. But you didn't? I didn't see them. So they must have been picked up whilst you waited for that bus? I suppose so. How long did you wait, Mrs. Jarman? Oh, no more than five minutes. Uh, this is very important, Mrs. Jarman. Can you remember anything about the cars that passed you while you were waiting? Any with just men driving? Oh, there were several. I think I... Oh, I can't really remember. I'm not very good on cars. I'm sorry. Never mind. But there was a lorry. What sort of lorry? Uh, one of those car transporter things. I remember that. From Cowley, sir, for sure. Get on to it, Lewis, now. Right, sir. Is that um, all, Inspector? I, I should get home, really. Of course. I'll get a car for you. Oh, thank you. And you're quite sure... You can't remember anything else about what they said? I don't think so. Only what I told you. She just kept saying, come on. Something like that. Oh, and uh, it'll be all right. Yes. It'll be all right. 
We'll have a giggle about it in the morning. What? Yes, that's it. We'll have a giggle about it in the morning. Is that important, Inspector? I believe it could be. Very. Uh, Mrs. Jarman, I may have to ask you to come to see us in the morning. We shall be holding an identity parade. You mean you want me to... Oh, dear. It is necessary, I'm afraid. Oh, I see. Oh, well, in that case, I... Uh, Sergeant Lewis will arrange to have a car take you home. Of course. And uh, one to bring you in tomorrow. Will 12 o'clock suit you? Um, oh, well, I, I suppose so. All right, Lewis? Uh, yes, of course. Until tomorrow, then, Mrs. Jarman. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Morse here. I want the private number of John Palmer, manager of Town and Gown Assurance Company. That's your problem. Find it. She says you're holding an identity parade. That's right, Lewis. The other girl was a colleague of Sylvia's. How'd you find out? They spoke of meeting in the morning. I see. But I asked them all. Yes. One, at least, withheld vital evidence. Told you a pack of lies, Lewis. So it seems. Sorry. No, not your fault. The female of the species, you know. No, not really, sir. No, I suppose not. You married men see it differently. Anyway, Mrs. Jarman will finger the guilty party for us. Yes, but identification isn't enough, is it? Not proof. Well done, Lewis. I had thought of that. I'm taking certain precautions. Corroborative evidence. How, sir? I'm going to ask Mr. Palmer to open his office for me. Now. I'm going rummaging through the desks of his employees. Letters, postcards, diaries. Anything that might connect one of them with Sylvia. You can't, sir. Can't? Not without a warrant. I never did understand the legal situation of a warrant. I think you ought to have one, sir. Do you? I shall tell him I'm looking for someone who murdered and raped one of his girls, not dirty postcards from Colwyn Bay. Well, good luck, sir. I shan't need it, Lewis. You might find it hard to believe, but I can be a nasty bastard when I want to. Really, sir? Mr. Palmer will be out of bed as if he'd got a flea in his pyjama bottom. That is my last word, Inspector. Under no circumstances could I agree. It would be a breach of trust. But, Mr. Palmer... In the middle of the night, you admit you have no warrant. It is outrageous. This is a murder investigation, sir. I am aware of that. I see. You may ask my staff in the morning to grant you access to the private possessions and correspondence. With their permission, you may make confidential copies of relevant letters and so on. That and no more. That it must be, then. 845 sharp, Inspector, if you please. We have work to do. And so, Mr. Palmer, do we. Perhaps you'll arrange for all your girls to be here for the identity parade at noon. Sharp. Good night. And... Any good, sir? No good at all. Oh. She thought two or three of them might be her. That won't do us, will it? No, Lewis, it won't. Oh, he got something from Cowley, at least. You traced the driver? Yeah, a fellow called Baker. They worked it out from the timesheets. See, they have this... Yes, it's all right, all right, get to the point. Did he see anything? Oh, he saw them all right. He remembers the blonde in particular. He was going to pick them up himself. <sighs> We're a despicable lot, aren't we? But he didn't? No, this car pulled in first. Chap driving, not a woman, he's sure of that. Observant, are Mr. Baker. So what else did he tell you about this car? It was red. Red? Yeah. Is that all? Yeah. No mate, no number? Well, it was nearly dark. He was watching the road. <sighs> Good for him. It is something. Sir. Something, yes, but not very much. We seem to have drawn a blank everywhere else. No, not quite a blank, Lewis. You said she couldn't identify any of the girls. Couldn't be sure, I said. And there was nothing at the office to connect any of them with Sylvia. You told me that. I did. Well, I don't see that we made any progress. What do you think of comprehensive education, Lewis? I, I don't know. I don't see what... And its effect on literacy. What? Have a look at that, Lewis. Hmm. Well, what do you make of it? Seems an answer to a job application, I should think. Good. Says the application's been unsuccessful. Quite right. And it's from? Regret no posts in the psychology department. Well, that must be it. But it doesn't say so on the letter heading, does it? No, there isn't one. Right. Or a reference number. Or a signature. True. Anything else odd about it, Lewis? Uh, oh, there's a spelling, sir. It looks a bit off to me. Isn't there an H in psychology? Excellent, Lewis. And two S's in assessing, and two N's in beginning, and so on. I see. And uh, what do you think, Lewis? Well, you get some pretty ropey typists these days, sir. A couple in records who can't... Quite even... scandalous, and yet... You think it's more than that, sir? Significant? <sighs> Just jars, Lewis, it jars. So where does it come from? Miss Jennifer Colby. 
One of the girls, didn't she? Yes, smarter than some of the others. She got it in the post this morning. It seems Mr. Palmer has no objection to them getting private mail at the office. But she didn't mind you seeing it, sir. No, why should she? It's only about a job. Well, I thought you'd I know. Them. It worries me. Slightly. So what will you do? Go and see her. Have a little chat. Mm, it's not a lot to go on, sir, is it? Probably nothing. Probably. But you see, Lewis, there is something else. What, sir? Jennifer Colby was one of the girls Mrs. Jarman pointed out. It might have been her with Sylvia on Wednesday night. Might? Only might? A long shot. A gamble. Uh, talking of which, sir, Black Prince didn't make it. Only second, I'm afraid. Never mind, Lewis. You only lost 50 pence. Yeah. You're a pound down, sir. No, actually, I'm a few bob up. I backed it each way, Lewis. Uh, good evening. Hello. Uh, Morse. Inspector Morse. Uh, there. I see. Come in. You've come to talk to Jennifer, I expect. Uh, yes, if she's in. I'll get her for you. Come into the lounge. Thank you. Excuse the mess. Oh, not at all. It's very tidy. Much more so than my place. Your place, Inspector? Uh, yes, I, I, I look after myself. I'm very well, I'm sure. I'm Sue Widdowson, by the way. A Jennifer's flatmate. I see. Not, not a colleague, though. No. I nurse at the city. Ah. I'll get Jennifer for you. Uh, thank you. Ah, Charlotte Bronte. Are you reading this? Not me. That's Jennifer. She's the intellectual around here. I'll get her. Excuse me. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, and, um... Thank you, Miss Widdison. A pleasure. And call me Sue. Everyone does. Uh, thank you, uh, Sue. Jenny? Jenny, yes. can you come down here? Oh. I must have put an inspector from the floor. Can you stand for anything? All right. Good evening, Inspector. Ah. How can I help? Uh, purely routine, of course. We have to check the movements of all the uh, persons... Suspects? <laughs> Hardly. Those who worked with Sylvia. It has to be done, you understand? Of course, I understand. I'm surprised you haven't done it before. So if you could just let me know what you were... Last Wednesday? I got home about six, had some supper, and then went out again until about eight. Sue was here. I'm sure she'll remember. And may I ask where you went? The library at Summertown. Oh, for your Charlotte Bronte here? Amongst others. So you must have spent about an hour in the library. A reasonable conclusion, Inspector. Seems a long time. I usually spend about two minutes. Perhaps you're not very fussy what you read. Shall I ask Sue about the time? No, that won't be necessary. I think I have all the information I need. Sorry to have disturbed you. I'll leave you to Miss Bronte, shall I? You don't take the listener, you say, Lewis? No, sir. Now, since poor old Ziminis went, it's the best. Really, sir? Uh, this week's amazing. Consent, wouldn't you say? Uh, I'm not sure. Actually, what... it's a fairly standard device, but it never occurred to me. Not until this morning. Until you had a go at the crossword? Exactly. But so how did it... Read the instructions. It's all there. Each of the across clues contains a deliberate misprint. And... The misprinted letters form a well-known quotation which solves... Lateral thinking, Lewis. That's what was needed. Lateral? A blockhead. An illiterate typist. That's what we thought, wasn't it? Oh, the letter, you mean? Of course, the letter. What else? Well, I just thought we were but doing... But suppose we assume the opposite. The work of a literary man, a scholar. Then the mistakes might Were be... deliberate. Look at it again. In that light. Well, my spell is not too hard. I've, I've underlined them. Oh, right. Well, the first mistake's in assessing. Good. There's an S left out. Uh, and then there's an A missing from many. Oh, I see it. Uh, uh, y from your. And so on. Which gives us S A Y N O T H I N G. Say nothing. So Jennifer Colby was being warned to keep quiet. Exactly. And she could have been the other girl. The one with Sylvia, according to Mrs. Jarman. Right. And she lied to me, Lewis. How, sir? Wherever she went last Wednesday, it wasn't the library. How do you know, sir? The date stamp in her book. It was wrong. A silly lie. I see. I want you to bring her in, Lewis. Now, just for questioning. 
Not an arrest, sir. Oh, no, Lewis, not yet. She could be an accessory to the crime of murder, but she might also be in danger. Because she knows, you mean? Exactly. Because she knows who... i finished finish the hedge, then. What? Well, poor old arms ache. should get the shears shot. I keep telling you. Yes, you do. <sighs> You're leaving it, then? I must get on with these essays. I want them back. That's more important, is it? Your students... I'll finish it in the morning. It'll probably be raining in the morning. Well, we could do with it. <laughs> the laws like the plains of Abyssinia. I see. Look. Leave those. Go on, I'll do them. Put your feet up. Go watch the box. The children are watching. Arguing. I can't stick it. <laughs> Pretty awful, aren't they? I mean, kids are all like that. You shouldn't let it bother you. Look, I, I tell you what. I'll just finish here, and then the two of us can... Don't bother. I've heard all your promises before, remember? Oh, please, Margaret, the children will hear you. I don't care. I don't care, I tell you. As far as I'm concerned, they can go to hell. And you with them. Good afternoon, Miss Colby. Good afternoon, Inspector. Am I allowed to go now? We have no authority to detain you against your will. Didn't Sergeant Lewis tell you that? He did. And I do have things to do, so perhaps if I could just sign my statement... I hope you won't be so foolish as to do that, Miss Colby. Pardon? To sign a statement which we both know to be false. I believe, Miss Colby, that you are withholding information which may be of very great value in discovering the identity of Sylvia Kay's murderer, in addition to which you are supplying the police with information which you know to be false. Am I allowed to ask why you're saying this? You persist with the legend that on the Wednesday night that Sylvia was murdered, you went to the library? But I did. But you didn't. And I can prove it beyond doubt. I see. Well, I must have got muddled. Really? Well, what were you doing on Wednesday evening, Inspector? Can you remember? Can you produce witnesses? Can anyone back up your story? I am not suspected of hitching a lift to Woodstock with Sylvia Kay. And I am. And you are. You really think I was with Sylvia? And I think you knew the driver of the car who picked you both up. And I think you're protecting him because you're scared. You'd rather not get involved. But you are involved, Miss Colby. That's why you're here. That's why I've got to know the truth. Well? I'm sorry, Inspector. I caused you a lot of trouble. You're right. And it must have been Thursday I went to the library, not Wednesday. And on Wednesday? I did go out, and I did go on the road to Woodstock. Yes. But I didn't get as far as Woodstock. What? I stopped at the Golden Rose at Bedbrook for a drink. A lager and lime. And then? And then I came home, Inspector, about half past seven, I think. Well, go on. What do you mean, go on? That was all. All? Are you telling me? <laughs> Please. You mustn't be too angry with me, Inspector. I've been so flustered and frightened. Why have you been frightened, Miss Colby? So many funny things have been happening. I don't seem to know what's real and what's not. What funny things? Everything, really. I'm beginning to wonder if I know what I'm doing. I thought I told you the truth about Wednesday, and now I realise I didn't. And then there was the letter. Letter, Miss Colby? At the office, telling me I hadn't got a job. So? I hadn't even applied for a job, Inspector. I see. Let's just get back to Wednesday night, shall we? Make sure I've got the details straight. I shall check, you know, at the pub. Yes, of course. I understand. But it was fairly crowded and I didn't stay long. No. But you never made it to Woodstock, only as far as Begbrook. I was never going to Woodstock, Inspector. You mean you asked this man to drop you off at Begbrook? What man are you talking about? The man who gave you a lift. I didn't get a lift. You didn't what? I said I didn't get a lift. I never hitchhike. Why should I, Inspector? I do have a car. I suppose if someone at the pub remembers her, she'll be in the clear, sir. And if they don't, we're no further on. Nothing to go on. You still think she's lying? Well, don't you? Well, I'm not so sure now. <laughs> she's such a good liar, she'd get any damn fool to believe her. You could be wrong, sir. No, no, we're just tackling it the wrong way. You know, Lewis, they tell me you can climb the Eiger in carpet slippers if you go the easy way. You mean we're trying the hard way? No, no, man, just the opposite. 
We've been trying to solve it the easy way. Now we've got to try the hard way. How? We've been trying to find the other girl to lead us to the man. Well, according to you, we have found her. Indeed, but she's too clever for us for the moment. And too loyal. So we're up a dead end there. If the girl won't lead us to the man, all right, we find the man. I see. How do we go about that, sir? A little Aristotelian logic, Lewis. Oh, indeed. You'll have to tell me about that, sir. Oh, have no fear, Lewis. I will. In the morning. Well, off you go. Back to Mrs. Lewis's welcoming bosom. You lucky man. Oh, thank you, sir. <clears throat> Night on the tiles for you, is it? In a sense, yes, Lewis. Since you ask. <laughs> you packed it. The ceramic tiles, Lewis. I'm decorating the bathroom. Oh, I didn't know you were a do-it-yourself man, sir. I'm not, Lewis. But we bachelors, what choice do we have? Inspector? Up here, Lewis. Ah. There you are, sir. Yes, here I am, Lewis. Before you ask, yes, it does bloody well hurt. You've got millions of nerve endings in your toes, Lewis. Did you know that? Really, sir? Uh, I, I had an uncle once who dropped a beer barrel on his foot. For God's sake, he... Lewis. Sorry, sir. Let me give you some advice, Lewis. Sir? In the first place, don't fall off ladders. But if you must, don't choose Sunday evenings. And above all, don't let them take you to the city in general. Oh, keep you hanging about, did they, sir? Three and a half hours, Lewis. Um, what did they say? <laughs> I wish I knew. How do you mean, sir? English-speaking doctors seem to be in short supply. Oh, I see. I think he said there was nothing broken. Well, that's good, sir. Is it? There's nothing good about being confined to bed for two days and then being swathed in crepe bandages and stuck on crutches for God knows how long. Well, I brought some cans of beer, sir. Better than grapes, they're gone. You're a good man, sir. Hypothesis. Uh, not an entirely fanciful one. We have some indications, but I concede a hypothesis. A hypothesis, sir? A proposition assumed for the sake of argument. Which is? That the murderer lives in North Oxford. <laughs> but really, sir, we have theory, no Lewis, I admit, but one I can bolster with argument. Now, our man is intelligent, academic even. He's a local man, we can assume, because of his relationship with Jennifer. He drives out for a drink to Woodstock. Not much, perhaps, but enough to suggest North Oxford. It's a very long shot, sir. Oh, how long, Lewis? Let's quantify, shall we? Quantify? How many people live in North Oxford, Lewis? I've no idea, sir. Well, have a bloody guess, man. Ten thousand. Ah, so X is one of ten thousand. Well, that's a start, I suppose. And only a start. Now, Lewis, what proportion are adult males? About a quarter, I suppose. Uh -huh. Which reduces the field to 2,500. Now, we can make a further reduction. There are reasons for assuming our man is between 35 and 50 years of age. Well, what does that leave us with, Lewis? Uh, about 1,250. Agreed. And how many of them, do you think, go out regularly for a drink to a pub or club? About half, perhaps? Quite possibly. Now, think about the letter. The one he sent to Jennifer. What do we deduce from that? That he's intelligent. Good. And a bit more than just intelligent, wouldn't you say? Not only can he spell the tricky words, but he can misspell them too. Now, that sets him apart, doesn't it? I suppose so. Well, could you have written that letter? No, sir. But you're pretty bright, aren't you, Sergeant? I'd say in the top 15%, sir. Good for you. So where does that put our unknown friend? Top. Five percent, I suppose. You see what progress we're making. We're gradually peeling away the layers. And it's all guesswork. We'd have to check all these figures. He's attractive to women, we can assume. Well, how many middle-aged men can you say that of? Mm -hmm. Make an assumption, for God's sake. Uh, say three out of five. Right. And how many own cars? Oh, I don't know. Um, two out of three. Thank you. Now, just one more question. How many people own red cars? Oh, really, sir? I've no idea. Then find out, man. Take a sample. How? Look out of the window. Oh. All right. Each car is so wished 
takes flight in the canvas of dreams where visions are light paper airplanes messengers of the soul in the endless expanse where dreams find their goal in the realm of paper dreams where hopes take flight with every fold we embrace the Guiding our way in the tapestry of dreams where fantasy sway. Paper airplanes fly across the sky, taking us higher as we reach for the stars of high. Beige, green, ah, red one, sir. Uh, another black, white, and another one. Uh, what was that? Oh, about one in ten, I'd say. Excellent. There you are, Lewis. Our man. Uh, a male person, resident in North Oxford, married, goes out for a drink regularly, sometimes to Woodstock. Well-educated man, perhaps at the university, age 35 to 50, attractive to women, and drives a red car. And that's what we're assuming, isn't it? So it seems so, but I... And how many people in North Oxford fall into that category? The figures are there. If my division is correct, how many of your 10,000 meet the criteria? One, sir. Exactly. But I don't know it's 10,000. I just said the first thing... Stop with the local authority. They'll have an up-to-date list of residents. It would take a lot of men. You'll get them. <sighs> All right, sir. If you feel up to it, we can get on to it in the morning. No, Lewis, I'm sure you feel up to it. Get on to it now. Peter, this is a pleasant surprise. Oh, come on in. I thought this was your golf morning. A bit too chilly. I thought a walk to North Oxford would be less painful. Not too early for a drink, I had. Oh, no, never too early. Our scotch should be lovely. <sighs> Haven't seen much of you this term, Ben. No, uh, a bit a bit frantic. Uh, disorganised, I'm afraid. Sure, I know the feeling. Cheers. Is everything all right, Bernard? Of course. Why should it be? Well, you just haven't seen your old self. I thought you might be a bit under the weather. I'm fine. And Margaret? What about Margaret? Oh, nothing. Just curious. No, she, she's well. We're both fine. Good. Oh, excuse me. Oh, no, that is... Uh, excuse me bothering you, sir, but uh, is that your car parked outside? Yes, sir. Uh, what, what's the trouble? Oh, no trouble, sir. Just checking out. Uh, been a spate of car theft in the area. Oh, I see. Perhaps if I could just see the logbook, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, well, coming in. Hey. It's, uh, it's in a filing cabinet somewhere. Oh, uh, a colleague of mine, Mr. Newlove, who's ah, at Lonsdale hey. College. Lonsdale. Fine college, they say, sir. Uh, am I in the way? Oh, not at all, sir. This won't take a moment. Oh, no, it's here somewhere. No need to bother, sir. If you can just let me have a few details. Of course. Uh, full name, sir? Bernard Carver. Uh, right, sir. Date of birth? First of the 6th, 1944. 44. Married or single? Married. Occupation? Oh, <laughs> university lecture, I suppose. Yes, sir. Uh, is uh, that everything? Not quite, sir. What else? Just the use you make of the car, sir. Oh, I don't see how that it can... It would be helpful, sir, if you don't mind. Well, why should I mind? Oh, all right. Uh, just for running around locally. Not much, really. But if you went outside Oxford for a drink, say, you'd take it then? Yes, I suppose so. Thank you, sir. Uh, but don't drink too much. Not if you're driving. <laughs> Many thanks for your help. All right. Uh, I'll see you, huh? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, what on earth was all that about? Uh, you'll excuse me not getting up, Mr. Crowther. I've hurt my foot. I have to use crutches. I'm sorry. Oh, please sit down. Thank you. I've gone through your statement, Mr. Crowther. There's nothing you want to add? No, it, it, it's all there. It's a pity you didn't tell us sooner. 
I, um, I, I realise that, Inspector. I, I even saw your appeal on television, but uh, I, I, I was afraid. But your wife would have to know. Well, I'd do anything to avoid hurting her. She's highly nervous, depressed. Not surprising, perhaps. I, I'm sure she doesn't know. Uh, I mean, suspect. That for the last six months you've been having an affair? Once a week. That's all it was. An hour or so. Just once a week. Was it worth it? But now it's over. Yes. And you haven't seen her since that night? No. It would help, you know, if this young lady came forward to corroborate the story. I realise that. But you don't want to tell us who she is. I'd rather you disbelieved me than dragged her into it. You say she knew you picked up these two girls on your way to see her? Yes. On your way to Woodstock? Yes. Why did you pick them up? Well, I, I, I don't know. Oh, perhaps I do. Erotic daydreams. It's a good job it's not a criminal offence, or we'd all be inside. Uh, pitiful, isn't it? But you dropped them off outside Blenheim Palace soon after seven. That's right. I'd arranged to meet uh, the, the girl at 7.15 at the side gate. Your tryst. Yes. And you never saw either of the girls again? No. I imagine they'd gone off to meet their boyfriends or something. Your description of the second girl is rather vague, isn't it? It was dusk, you remember. Uh, and she sat in the back. Uh, Sylvia did all the talking. But not to her friend, you say? No, just generally. I didn't get the impression that they knew each other very well. I see. So why hasn't this friend come forward? I have no idea, Inspector. Perhaps... Perhaps for the same reason you didn't come forward. Fear of something. It could be. We'll have to keep your car for a while, I'm afraid. Really? I shall want our forensic people to go over it. Very thoroughly. Oh, I see. I'll arrange for a car to take you home, Mr Crowther. Thank you. And my wife? At this stage, I have no reason to involve her. Thank you, Inspector. And the car? What about it? You'll be able to explain that to your wife. Oh, well, uh, I'll think of something. Of course, you're used to that sort of thing, aren't you, sir? Did you believe him, sir? It's not a question of believing, Lewis. It's a question of proving. We really need the other girls, sir, don't we? We have her, Lewis. I'm sure it's Jennifer. I thought the landlady at the pub confirmed her story. She was at Bagbrook, not Woodstock. Thought it might be. That's how she put it. Well, then, I mean... Crowther wrote that letter, I'm sure of it. But we can't be certain, sir. I agree it fits the picture, but... As you say, we can't be certain. Not yet. What about Sanders, Lewis? You've been keeping an eye? (laughs) It's getting to be a popular duty, that one. Volunteers, even. What? Yeah, one-track mind, Mr Sanders. Really? Yeah, spends most evenings at the cinema, porno palaces, all that continental heavy breathing. Alone? Yes. Anything else? Well, he's a good customer at the news agent behind the station, the one with the adult material. He's in there in his lunch breaks. But no new girlfriend, no uh, social life? No, second-hand pleasures only, it seems. I think I must call on Mr Sanders. I get rid of these damn crutches. There's a hospital this afternoon, isn't there? It is. A few hours to while away. Do you want me to drive you, sir? No, thank you, Lewis. I've made arrangements. I have other plans for you. Oh? I want you to go and see Mrs Crowther. But I thought we were leaving her out of it. We are. But I don't understand... Just be patient, Lewis. I'll explain. Kibben's office supplies. My husband's at work. Mr Crowther rung in. He's got trouble with his portable sticking carriage, I think. He didn't mention it. Well, it shouldn't take a second. If you say he rang... I could call back, I suppose. Wouldn't be this week, though. No, you'd better fix it. He keeps it here on the table. Oh, I see. Oh, but it, it seems to run quite freely. Really? Well, I just try a few lines. Can I use this paper? Well, it's only note paper. Oh, let's just get it in. That's about my speed. Uh, I just manned them. Well, I mustn't keep you. Just uh, check the spring. Tensions, you know. Seems perfectly all right to me. Oh, I'll be in the kitchen if you want anything. All right, thanks. Shouldn't be any problems. My appointment was for three o'clock. That was an hour ago. Doctor will see you as soon as he's free. Why do you tell me to come at three if I'm not... I'm sh- sure you'd be more comfortable sitting down, resting no. there. Looked after all right, Inspector Morse. Well, if you call me... Oh, 
hello. You remember me? Don't you remember me? How could I forget you? Sue. That's right, isn't it? Everyone calls me Sue. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, the city in general, you work here. Oh, not one of your more brilliant deductions, Inspector. I like the uniform, very attractive. Thank you. Please, have a seat. I'm sorry, I daren't. I'm on duty. I'm sure you know how it is. Matron would hammer me. <laughs> Reduce you to the ranks. <laughs> Something like that. A shame. Yes. But I really would like to see you sometime. When you come off duty? At six. Well, perhaps. At you... six, I have to go home and change. At seven, oh, I. Oh, don't have... tell me you have a date. Let's just say a previous engagement. What about tomorrow? I can't manage tomorrow. Wednesday, then. What about Wednesday? Yes. That would be nice. Oh, well, I could manage it's... Wednesday. What about uh, 7.30 in the Burden Baby? Can you get there all right? I think I can manage it. Not a child, you know. No, sir, you're certainly not a child. Inspector Morris, doctor will see you now. Good God. My luck has changed. <laughs> Here, let me help you. I'm going that way. Oh. Lean on me. Thanks. Thanks very much indeed, Sue. Not the notepaper? Oh, they're positive. Jennifer's letter was not typed on Crowther's typewriter or on his notepaper. Oh, I have to go through all that. If she checks out... You're right, way. Lewis. It could be awkward. She didn't believe me, I'm sure. I could tell from her manner. Smelt a rat, did she? Several, I should think. Oh, God. It was irregular, Lewis. Grossly irregular. I did point that out to you, sir. Yes, I think it might go badly for you with the Chief Constable, if she were to complain. With me? Now we must put things right at once. We, sir? You'd better get over to Lonsdale, Lewis. Have a word with Crowther. A word? What am I supposed to say? Use your mouse, man. You're not in apron strings. Remember, Lewis, he asked us to keep his wife out of it, so we obliged, indulged in a little harmless deception in order to check his typewriter. Oh, I suppose that might do. Of course it'll do. Off you go. How'd you get on at the hospital, sir? Uh, oh, not too bad, Lewis. Not too bad at all. You mobile again, sir? Well, I turned in the crutches. I can just about raise a brisk hobble. Tomorrow I can try the car. Oh, good, sir. And uh, they didn't keep you hanging about? Oh, nothing to complain about, Lewis. Nothing to complain about at all. Well, I just uh, push over to Lonsdale, sir, catch Crowther before he leaves. Good. Oh, uh, uh, and while you're there, Lewis, sir, see if he has another typewriter in his room. Hello? Uh, is that 54385? It is. Can I help? Um, I'd like to speak to Miss Widowson. Yes, she is. Who shall I say is calling? Uh, an old school friend. <laughs> I'll get her straight away, Inspector Morse. Sue! Suey! An old school friend on the phone! <laughs> hello, who is that? Uh, hello, Morse here. <gasps> I don't remember you at school, Inspector. No, I, I was very shy. You must have been. Uh, but you've grown out of it. Oh, not quite. I feel rather tongue-tied. Oh, dear. You're not cancelling our date, I hope. Oh, no, quite the contrary. That's why I rang. Oh, good. You see, I, I could get tickets. A dinner dance at the Sheridan. Oh, lovely. Oh, you'd like it. Uh, it seemed more exciting than a trip. I'd love it. Uh, several of my friends from the hospital are going. Uh, not too many, I hope. I don't want to have to share you. Perhaps it's not such a good idea. It'll be fun. You'll see. Okay, then. Um... Shall I pick you up about 7.15? I can drive again. Oh, that'll be fine. Until Wednesday, then? Yes. Oh, is it long dresses, by the way? Oh, uh, I've no idea. I suppose I could find oh, out. Don't worry. I'll ask my friends. And thank you. I'm really looking forward to it. Yes. Me too. Uh, good night, Sue. <laughs> Hello, Bernard. Am I late, Peter? Sorry. Ah, plenty of time. Margaret and I'm with you? No, not, not feeling quite up to it. Pity. Guest nights can be quite fun. Have you had one of these? Oh, the little Billy Do from our principal. Yeah. Odd, isn't it? Asked by the police to check every typewriter in the college. In connection with the Woodstock murder inquiry, of all things. Well, will they do it? They have. Good mind, anyway. The Bertha was scurrying round with them this evening. Well, they won't have much joy with mine. A Caxton original. <laughs> One suspect less. Now, Bernard, what are you going to have to drink? 
Won't there be enough provided? Is there ever enough provided? Hello, Sue. All right? Hello, Adam. Who's that? Dr. Ayres. He's one of our housemen. Yeah. Oh. Dances well. Yes, doesn't he? This must be very boring for you. Of course not. I must have been off my head. You did say you were tongue-tied. I asked you to a dance when I had my foot swathed in bandages. I think your pimsel looks very fetching. <laughs> Do you think it'll catch on? Black tie and pimsels? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to order a bottle of champagne. Steady now. It is a special occasion. You've got to drive me home, remember? Not for a long time yet. Right then. And perhaps after the champagne, when they play a slow number. I'll give it a go. <laughs> Pimpsell and all. Uh, waiter, over here. No pain? No, no pain, staff nurse. No pain at all. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Anything. <laughs> Why did you ask me out? Because I find you very beautiful. And I wanted to be with you. Do you mean that? I don't know if I meant it when I asked you. But I mean it now. I think you know I do. Can we go now? Somewhere on our own? Here we are. You told me that you might not have meant what you said. Not when you said it. Oh, I'm getting all muddled. What I'm trying to say is... You did want to ask me something, didn't you? Did I? Oh, you know you did. About Jennifer. That's where we both came in, wasn't it? You thought she knew something about the Woodstock murder. Yes. And you wanted to ask me about her boyfriend and that sort of thing, didn't you? Yes, uh, at the time. But not now. Don't worry, Sue. I'm not going to ask you now. Not at a time like this. When can we meet again, Sue? Sue? What is it? What's the matter? We can't meet. Not again. Why not? Of course we... There is someone, isn't there? Not just a boyfriend. We're supposed to be getting married. When he qualifies. I see. Oh, I should never have let you take me out. I'm sorry. Why did you, Sue? Oh, I don't know. Yes, I do. I wanted you to. I'm sorry. Sorry, then you'll ever know. It's Jennifer. She parks a car on the corner. Does it sound silly to say thank you? Thank you for this evening. Oh, it's better to have loved and lost, I suppose. Good night, Sue. I'd better... Good evening, Inspector. You're back early. We didn't want to drink and drive. Very commendable. Will you come in for coffee, Inspector? Uh, no, thank you, Miss Colby. Good night, then. Are you sure you don't want to come in for coffee? I'm quite sure. You know I'll cry myself to sleep, don't you? Don't say that. I wish you were going to sleep with me. I wish you were going to sleep with me, Sue. Forever. Damn, 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 damn. I sent you down all the stuff from Lonsdale. Yeah, don't keep us hanging about, will you? You know what he's like. Ah, especially this morning. He'd be in a really foul mood this morning. All right. All right. Yeah, uh, quick as you like, then, all right? Yeah, cheers. 
Morning, sir. You got it fixed, then? Yes. Battery, was it? Yes. Uh, it's the damp weather, sir, leaving them outside. Is it? Uh, expensive new battery. Over oh. 50 pounds, Lewis. Mm, well, that's a bit steep, sir. Where'd you get it? My local garage. You should have tried the uh, tyre and battery people at Eddington. I always use them. Oh, always having car trouble, are you, Lewis? Well, I had a couple of punctures recently. That can happen to anyone. <sighs> Can't you change a tyre, Lewis? What are you, an old woman? A spare, sir. You have to have a spare. It's law, you know. Mm. You know I find them very reasonable. Obliging. It's more than most garages these days. They turn out any time in an emergency. Lewis, you're a genius. Pardon, sir? These tyre people. How many branches have they got? Just the two, I think. The one at Headington. Get on to it, Lewis. But I thought you've got a battery, Not sir. for me, man. But I thought... For Miss Colby. Miss Jennifer Colby. I'm sorry, Inspector. You've just missed her. She's gone to London for the weekend. London? To stay with friends, I believe. I let her go early. We like to be flexible with loyal members of staff. I'm sure, Mr. Palmer. Do you know when she's coming back? Uh, no. No, I don't. I don't discuss personal matters. No, I don't suppose you do. Uh, perhaps her flatmate would know. I can let you have her number. Oh, thank you, I know it. Well, perhaps she could help you, Inspector. Now, I really must... Get yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Away for the weekend, sir, is she? So it seems. Yeah, what about Crowther, sir? Should we bring him in? Uh, I'm not sure. I'd rather they confronted each other. Unannounced, they're both cool customers. I don't want them wriggling out of it. Uh -huh. I know, yeah. So we can't prove anything. They have to do it for us, don't they? Oh, they will, Lewis. You'll see, they will. Thanks to you. It's not proof, sir. All we can prove is that she rang the Cowley branch of tyre and battery at 6.15 on the evening of Wednesday the 29th. And that they couldn't get there before 7, which Jennifer said was too late. Too late if she was to make it a Woodstock by 7.15. Which is when Crowther had arranged to meet her. Yeah, it does seem to fit, sir. There are a lot of coincidences. Life is full of them, Lewis. I don't find it beyond belief that Jennifer should run into Sylvia, her colleague, waiting at the bus stop. Has that never happened to you, Lewis? Well, I suppose it has. But that Crowther should give him a lift. Why not? He was on his way to Woodstock, wasn't he? He admits that. No, it all makes perfect sense. Once we got over the problem of her car, that's what was holding us up, Lewis. And the pub, sir, at Begbrook. What about that? Oh, it was crowded. Plenty of young girls in there at that time. I doubt whether that alibi will stand up to close scrutiny. So we bring Crowther in, or... Uh... Leave him till Monday. I think we'll contact him now. Call him for Monday. Give him the weekend to sweat on it. Ah, uh, Lonsdale College? Uh, can you put me through to Mr. Crowther's room? What? Oh, I see. Uh, might I ask where? Oh, thank you. Uh, no, uh, no message. No luck, sir. What do you make of this, Lewis? Crowther is away for the weekend, at a conference, somewhere in London. Will you come in? Wait for her. If you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Would you like some coffee? Uh, no, no, thanks. She shouldn't be long. The London trains are usually on time. Yes. When you telephoned, I thought... Did you? I'm sorry. But it really is Jennifer you want to see. Yes. You think she's got something to do with the Woodstock business, don't you? Something, perhaps. I don't know if I should tell you, but... T tell me. I nearly phoned you three or four times. I wish you had. So do I. So... Yes. Come here. I've missed you very much. So... Oh, I've been so mixed up, thinking about you and then about David. And what have you thought? I just don't know anymore what to do. Time, Sue. Give it time. Then you'll know. We're, we're both know. Do you think so? I'm sure. And... And what? While you're thinking, would you like to come out with me again? Oh, yes, of course. Excuse me. Jennifer. Good evening, Inspector Morse. I'm sorry to have to take up more of your time, Mr. Crowther. 
But there have been uh, fresh developments. Really? What are they? How was your conference? Rather boring. And what was it about? Admissions. University admissions procedures. Yes, doesn't sound very interesting. I'm sorry I had to tell my wife that you wanted to see me, Inspector. She worries, you know. Yes, I'm sorry too, but we wanted to be sure of getting hold of you urgently. Ah, uh, Sergeant Lewis, you've met, and yes. this is Miss Colby, Miss Jennifer Colby. Hello, Miss Colby. Good morning, Mr. Crowther. You do know each other, then? Slightly. We have met once or twice before. I collect for the SPCC. Mr. Crowther's always very generous with a donation. Well, it is one of the best... Are you courses. saying that your acquaintanceship derives solely from Miss Colby's charitable collections? Why, yes. <laughs> You're suggesting otherwise? I am suggesting otherwise. I am, not to put too fine a point on it, suggesting the two of you are having an affair. <laughs> I'm sure I'm very flattered, Inspector. Perhaps I might wish I was having an affair with Miss Colby, but I'm afraid the answer's no. What else can I say? I must remind you that you are here in connection with a murder inquiry. The murder of a girl who was travelling in your car, Mr Crowther. I put it to you that Miss Colby was the other passenger in the car that uh, night. No, Inspector, she was not. Of that you can be completely assured. And Miss Colby, do you deny that you were the other passenger? Yes, I do deny it, absolutely. Do you want us to sign anything, Inspector? No, that won't be necessary. In that case... If that's all, Inspector... For the moment, Sergeant Lewis will see you out. Follow me, sir. Uh, and Miss Colby... Yes, Inspector? The names and addresses of your friends in London, you will let Sergeant Lewis have them? I already have, Inspector. Goodbye. <sighs> They're lying. Both of them lying in their teeth. Yes, sir. They're a pair of prize liars. Oh, come on, out with it. What, sir? You know what I mean. You think I'm up the bloody pole, don't you? You think I'm going bonkers. You believe what everyone else says but not me, don't you? Well, don't you? I think you are wrong, sir. You think I'm wrong? Let me tell you something. If anyone's wrong here, it's not me. If you can't see those two are lying to save their own necks, you shouldn't be on this case. Do you hear me? Perhaps you ought to have someone else, sir. Perhaps. It's not just their denials, sir. It's what the lab said about the note. It wasn't Crowther's typewriter at all. We ought to check up on this chap, New Love. New Love? Who the hell is he? We've never heard of the bloody man before. All right, he's got a typewriter. That's not a sin, is it? He didn't write that letter. Crowther did. If you don't see that, you must be as blind as a bloody bat. But don't you think we ought to... Lewis! Sir. sir. <sighs> just bugger off for a bit. There's a good man. Right, sir. And you, sir? I just want to think, Lewis. Just let me think, will you? Right, sir. Margaret. Margaret, you in the kitchen? Margaret, where are you? Margaret? Margaret, what are you doing? Open the door, Margaret. Margaret! 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 Margaret, for God's sake! Margaret! Oh, no! No! There was a note, sir. They always leave a note, don't they? For him? Yes, sir. Did you read it, Constable? I don't think so, sir. He was more or less flaked out. Where is he now? Upstairs with the doctor. He's in poor shape. I see. But he asked for you, sir. Most insistent. Yes, I'd seen him earlier today, the Woodstock business. Is he involved, sir? I don't know. I checked with the Radcliffe, sir. It was a heart attack. He had a fair night, but no visitors yet. Right, Lewis. What was he going to tell you, do you think, sir? Well, perhaps it doesn't matter much now. Not matter, sir. I had this. This morning's mail. Who from, sir? She left two notes, it seems. One for me as well. For you, sir? Why should she do that? He was quite wrong, you know. She knew all about it, had done for weeks. His affair? She'd taken to following him. In a mini, Wednesdays. Missing her evening class. Ah, and that night, did she follow him there? She was there, Lewis, a few yards away. Then she must have seen the... The car turned into the car park of the Black Prince. I parked and walked cautiously up to the yard. I hid behind a car on the left of the yard. Bernard's car was parked on the same side. They were sitting in the front, Bernard and a blonde. She looked no more than 17. They were sitting talking. Then I saw them kissing. 
I felt burning anger. Then they got out of the front and went into the back. I couldn't see any more. At least I was spared that. Well, she's really done for him, sir, hasn't she? Nailed him as well as herself. I suppose he got carried away in Sylvia's struggle. No, he? she hasn't nailed him. She loved him. She says at the end, he did what hundreds of men do, and for that I blame myself and no one else. Then why tell us he was uh, there? You didn't let me go on. There's more, sir. Oh, yes. The car moved off and out of the yard. The girl stood where he had left her. The darkness seemed blacker than ever as the car lights faded. I came up behind her. I had a tyre lever. It had been lying in the yard. Jesus. I hit her across the back of the head. It seemed like a dream. I felt no remorse, no fear, nothing. You thought it was something like that, did you, sir? No. There's no doubt who wrote it, sir. No doubt at all. Uh, so that clears it all up, sir? It clears one thing up, Lewis. Only one, sir? Whoever murdered Sylvia Kay, it certainly wasn't Mrs Crowther. I had to see you, Peter. I didn't know who else... Just was. take it gently, Bernard. I tried to tell more. There'll be plenty of time for that. It's more speed to see you. Yeah. About your typewriter. Yeah. I'm sorry, Peter, to drag you into this. What's it matter? You were welcome. Oh, it matters. Just forget all about it. Concentrate on getting well again. Peter, I've written a note for Morse. What do you say he gets it? Why not give it to him yourself when you're feeling fitter? Oh, please, Peter. All right, if that's what you want. Thank you. It's, uh, it's in the cupboard. Uh, here. <laughs> I'll see he gets it, Bernard. Well, if there's nothing else you want... They said only a couple of minutes. I'll come again. Peter. What is it, Bert? Please stay. Uh, I've got to tell you. Tomorrow. Uh, uh, Woodstock murder. You know about it. Well, only what... I picked her up, you know. Sylvia Kay and another girl. I didn't know. Uh, funny, really. I was going to meet one of them anyway. Leave it, Bernard, not now. I ruined that, of course. They knew each other. We had to pretend. I dropped her off. But not Sylvia Kay. No, no, no not Sylvia. Can you understand, Peter? She was asking for it. She was that sort. Oh, I must have been crazy. I had her, Peter, in the back seat. Can you believe that? Look, I don't think you should talk about it. I never left. I just left her. And she was all right when you left her. I just drove home. Stopped for a scotch on the way. Just as if nothing. I understand, Bernard, really. No. You can tell the police when no. you're better. No. It'll be all right. You'll no. see. There's something else. I can't tell them. What? In the yard. I'm sure there was someone, someone who, who saw me with Sylvia. Who saw you? I, I didn't know it was dark, so dark, only a glimpse that I passed her on the way home. Passed her? She was always a slow driver, nervous. Who did you pass, Bernard? I checked up. She didn't go to her evening class. Margaret. <laughs> You think it was Margaret who killed that girl? And that was why she... Bernard. Bernard, are you... Nurse, quick, please, in here. An act of contrition, Lewis, that's what I make of it. Not the truth, sir. Not uncommon on the deathbed. He couldn't have known she'd written to you. Confessed, anyway. And the guilt, of course, that he'd driven her to suicide. Bit unusual, sir, isn't it, this? Two confessions to the murder. You don't believe either of them? No. Nope. I can see that if Mrs Crowther was telling the truth, that lets him out. I think but... he must have seen her there. And then assume Well, that... you accept she was there, then? Oh, I don't doubt that. Well, why don't you believe the letter, then? Well, she says in this letter she felt... burning anger. Remember that? Exactly, sir. That's why she... Well, burned. anger, Lewis. Not jealousy, but anger. Yeah. Well, Which made me think... If she was going to smash anyone's skull, it would have been Bernard's. 
Well, it's just a word, mm, sir. A little fanciful, perhaps, but there's more. Now, just think. She says she entered the yard on the left-hand side. That's right. And hid behind a car. Spied on them. And they were parked on the same side. Further along, right? Yes. Now, remember that car park? That night? Where was the manager's car parked? On the opposite side, sir. The right-hand side. Exactly. Now... Mrs. Crowther admits to being frightened, frightened of the dark, perhaps, and frightened of being seen. And yet you ask me to believe that she left the shadows and crossed the yard and picked up that tire lever no more than five yards from where Bernard dallied with his bottled blonde. It's rubbish, Lewis. She read about the tire lever in the papers. She lied to save her precious Bernard, just as he lied to save her. So many lies from all of them. Oh, not just lies, a mixture of lies and truth. That's what's dogged us from the start of this one, separating the wheat from the chaff. So we're no further on. Well, on the contrary. We're nearly at the end of the road now. I think it's time I saw Mr. Sanders again. Something I need to put to him. Well, I don't see how he's going to... And I want to make a call. Right, sir. A personal call, Lewis. Oh, sorry, sir. Uh, while I'm making it... Uh... Go and fish out the copies of Sylvia's medical records from the file. Medical records? Just get them, Lewis. There's a good chap. Right. I'm sorry, Inspector, but I do not allow any of my nurses to receive personal calls whilst on duty. If we allowed personal calls, personal letters, can you imagine how outpatients could operate? I do appreciate your position, Matron, but I thought an exception might be made that the police, you know. But I understood it wasn't official police business. I hope staff nurse Widdison's not in... Uh, oh, no, uh, really. Uh, well, it's not exactly official. I see. In that case, I don't see uh, why... No, I, I understand. Uh, perhaps I could catch her at lunchtime. Uh, you do allow your nurses a break at lunchtime, Matron? Staff nurse is free between one and two this week. And where would she take lunch, Matron? Oh, really, Inspector, how would I know? Uh, no, of course not. Uh, stupid of me. You might try the canteen. I believe I have seen her in there occasionally. But so many of them go out into town not satisfied with the food we provide, it mm. seems. But I really don't uh, see why Well, you uh, want... uh, thank you, Matron. Uh, I might pop in. You've been most helpful. Thank you. <sighs> now, town and gown. I hope this is important, Inspector. I'm with a client. Oh, very important, Mr. Palmer. Very important for both of us. I think it best if we met in private somewhere, sir. More discreet. Where do you suggest, Inspector? I thought perhaps over a drink. An informal chat, you know, off the record. Drink, Inspector. What about the Rosen Crown at Begbrook? You know that, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure I... Shall we say about six, Mr. Palmer? Yes. All right. Good. I'm looking forward to it. Rosen Crown, sir. That's where Jennifer... You've got the records, Lewis? Uh, yes. Thank you. Not a very exciting medical history, is it? Mild jaundice, measles. I'm surprised she was on the pill at 17, Lewis. From what we know about her, sir, I'd have been surprised if she wasn't. Ah, here we are. I thought so. She'd broken her arm. But a couple of months earlier, sir. I say it's very painful. Something to do with nerve endings. Like the foot. <laughs> Well, you should know, sir. She was still receiving treatment. Continuation of physiotherapy treatment recommended as before, Tuesday and Thursday a.m. Really, sir? Well, thank you, Lewis. You can pop that back. Right, sir. And then I want you to take this envelope over to the town and gown office. For Palmer? For Jennifer Colby. Inside, there's one sheet of paper and a return envelope addressed to me. Tell her to write an answer to the question I've asked, seal up her answer and return it with you. Can you just ring her up, Just sir? do as I say, Lewis. Uh, uh, stay with her all the time. All right, sir. What are you asking her? At this stage, I don't want you to see the question I've asked or the answer she gives. Is that clear? Whatever you say, sir. Hello, Sue. Hello. What a nice surprise. They said I might catch you. Oh, it's lucky it's raining. I usually go out. The food's revolting here. Uh. <laughs> Can I get you a coffee? Probably won't kill you. Oh, uh, no thanks. I've only got a minute. Oh, me too. It's frantic today. Oh, as I was hoping you'd be in touch. But it was a bit awkward, wasn't it? Oh, Jennifer walking in on us. Yes. We don't seem to have much luck, do we? Seeing each other. No. But soon, I hope. 
Oh, yes, we must make it soon. Um, would you be offended if I asked... Ask what? I'd like a photograph. Just to have with me. Oh, I'm flattered. Why should I be offended? Some people are funny about photographs. I think it's like giving away their souls. Oh, somewhere I've got one of those awful passport things I carry around. Oh, here we are. Oh, God, it's terrible. Are you sure you want that one? Why, smashing. <laughs> not half as good as the real thing, though. Oh, no, certainly not. Oh, look at the time. I'll have to rush. Yeah, of course. So, when will I see you? Oh, soon. Really soon. I'll ring. You better. Sipping on sunshine, catching the breeze. A thousand thoughts flowing through my mind with ease. Walking barefoot on the sandy shore. Life's little wonders couldn't ask for more. As the sun paints the sky in hues of gold. We're lost in a story that's timeless and bold. Seagulls whisper secrets in the salty air. In this daydream dance, we're beyond compare. Daydream believer, that's what I am. Living life like a melody, a joyous jam. Oh, won't you join me? were just odd bits, bits that didn't fit the pattern, even from the start. You remember the first night, Lewis, in the car park? Where we found her? In a sex attack, you said, remember? Well, that was right, wasn't it, sir? The post-mortem evidence, her blouse, all I agree sort of... it looked like a sex murder, but things aren't always what they seem, are they? What else do you think? It struck me as odd, from the start. Well, I know it was dark, but there were cars coming and going. Would anyone be crazy enough to rape a girl in the full blaze of headlights? Well, perhaps he got carried away. Crazy, like you said. I mean, there was a struggle. Her clothes were torn. Exactly. That's what deceived me at first. But not now, sir. Not now, Lewis. Not any more. Let us assume two separate events. Rape and then murder. Now, the first seemed clear-cut. There'd been sexual activity. Her clothes had been torn about. Uh, that's what diverted me. How, sir? I told you, Lewis, that Sylvia was no angel. Everything we know about her indicates that she was fast, easy. I wouldn't have put it beyond the bounds of probability that Sylvia could have engaged in casual sex with a stranger, the man who picked her up. Who we know was Crowther. Yes. And if we believe Margaret's confession, or part of it, we have our explanation for those signs of sexual activity. But hardly rape, sir. Exactly. And you, love, told us what Crowther said just before he died. She was willing. Once I was sure Crowther had picked her up, I became less sure about a sex murder. Did he strike you as the type? Well, I suppose not, sir. Not really. Uh, he was quite capable of infidelity, casual sex, but... Well, so are most of us, I'm afraid. But not murder? No. I was more and more sure of that. So when you got his wife's confession... I didn't believe it. But she was quite right in one thing. The murder was quite separate. We'd been looking at one composite event... But there were, in fact, two. Oh, wrong, Lewis. There were, in fact, three. Three, sir? Yeah, we assumed rape and murder, almost simultaneous. But once we picked up Crowther, and from Margaret's evidence and what we know about Sylvia, we have a very different picture. Sylvia, a willing partner, and a murder by a third party. Uh, but you're forgetting something, sir. The torn clothes. Her blouse was practically ripped off. Ah, oh, I wasn't forgetting it. That was the trouble. I was preoccupied with it, fitting it into the pattern, the composite picture. And it didn't fit? No. It was a third piece of the jigsaw, a quite separate piece. Good God. That's terrible. Perverted. Ah, indeed. And as the case progressed, there seemed to be only one person sufficiently warped to interfere with the body of a dead girl, a man who feasts on a diet of blue films and pornography. Sanders. Of course. I went to see him, Lewis. Uh, he's sick, and he knows it. But he's not um, unlikable in a nasty sort of way. He's promised to see a psychiatrist. Not that I expect that'll do much good. And he admits you... Oh, that think he... about it. He'd been waiting for her all evening. He'd drunk too much. When he did find her, he was sick in mind and body. Sick not only from too much drink, but from pent-up sexual frustration. He found her quite by chance, I'm sure. And he fiddled about with her, is that it? That is it. Uh, he certainly does need treatment. Mm. 
Well, at least it cleared up the contradictions, made sense of it. It didn't take us any closer to finding out who killed her. Just helps rule out Sanders. <laughs> We're good at that, aren't we? Ruling people out. Don't belittle it. Processes of elimination. That's how you found Crowther for us, remember? Me? Well, it wasn't really me. Now there's really only one person left, isn't there? Our Miss X, you mean? The other girl? We can be pretty certain Crowther dropped her off somewhere. Once he realised she knew Sylvia, it was too risky. You're convinced that was Jennifer Colby, aren't you? She's lied from the word go. And why? We knew Bernard had a mistress. We knew Bernard sent Jennifer Colby that cryptic message. Well, are we sure? Well, new love confirmed Bernard used his typewriter. Well, Bernard admitted he'd picked up his mistress with Sylvia. Why else should she lie so persistently, I asked. What was the point of it? Unless she was protecting her lover, or at least her affair. And you think she saw them? She was in the car park the and she... The biggest whopper of all turned out to be true. That she had a car? Yeah. But it had a puncture. We confirmed that. Oh, but the puncture got mended, Lewis. <laughs> I can confirm that. I don't follow this, sir. You will. I want you to go and pick her up now. You mean Jennifer Colby? Well, who the hell else, Lewis? I really thought after your sergeant saw me yesterday that you'd finish... This time I'll do the talking, Miss Colby, if you don't mind. You can interrupt me if I'm wrong, Miss Colby, but not otherwise. Do you understand? I understand. Good. Then I'll tell you how Sylvia Kay died. I think two girls were picked up by a man one night and that one of them was that man's mistress. Usually she travelled by car, but that night the car was out of action. By sheer chance she was picked up by the very man she was going to see. Now the whole thing seemed too dangerous. She asked to be dropped off somewhere, but she did not return home. She knew the other girl, she didn't like her, but she knew her, and she knew she was attractive to men. She began to feel a growing and uncontrollable jealousy. Her lover was unfaithful to his wife. Was he also capable of being unfaithful to her? She decided to go after them. Sylvia must have told her where she was going. A bus came. The Woodstock bus, after all. She caught it, and she found them. She saw enough to unleash her rage at that cheap slut of a girl. Perhaps they confronted each other. I think Sylvia sensed that fury and tried to run, but her skull was smashed by one vicious blow. A killer dragged her body into a dark corner of the yard. Then she walked out into the night. Do you think that's how it happened, Miss Colby? Yes. And we both know who murdered Sylvia, don't we? Yes. Uh, Lewis, sir? Miss Colby will be going home in a moment to arrange a car, would you? A car, sir? That's what I said. Straight away, please. We've taken up quite enough of her time. Right, sir. Uh, just clear one thing up for me, Miss Colby. Who mended your puncture? The man across the road. I helped him. I see. And how long have you been the mistress of your employer? About a year. Wasn't it a bit risky? Telling someone else? Well, it meant we could have a room. Once a week. Mr Palmer told you I knew. Yes, this morning. How did you find out, Inspector? Oh, luck. <laughs> or bad luck for some, I suppose. I checked a night school register. How did that help? I was looking to see if Mrs Crowther had been present. How did that tell you? She hadn't. But a Mrs Josephine Palmer had a regular attender every Wednesday. You must have a very suspicious mind. Yes, it helps. It was enough to raise a small doubt. I see. And when did this business of the letters start? In the summer. I thought it was rather melodramatic, but it seemed to work for them. The car's waiting, sir. Right. Thank you. I'm sorry, Inspector. I really... Goodbye, I... Miss Kelby. Right, follow the officer. Right. Hmm. Excuse me, sir, but I don't think you're being exactly fair with me. What do you mean? You told me the case was over. It is, Lewis. Well, how can it be? You just let the... At 9am this morning, a person was charged with the murder of Sylvia Kay. Who? You have the name, Lewis, in that envelope. Doesn't make any sense to me, sir. 
No. Leave me now, Lewis. I'll, I'll tell you later. Not now. Good afternoon, sir. You want to get through? Thank you, Sergeant. And see the key, sir. Thank you. Uh, cell number oh. one, sir. seemed to suggest only one thing. As we now know, there was another explanation. But we assumed it must be Jennifer, because of what they said at the bus stop. That's right. Mrs. Jarman was sure of that. We'll have a giggle about it in the morning, remember? Yes. And then, of course, Crowther's letter implicated Jennifer. And our assumptions went on from there. Seemed logical. Because it fitted our hypothesis. Oh, that could be a dangerous game, Lewis. Really, sir? You see, there was other evidence from the start, equally logical. There was? We had it in black and white. Sylvia was going somewhere else Thursday morning, not just to work. That's right, sir, the hospital. Outpatients Tuesdays and Thursdays. Correct. And Sue Widderson worked in outpatients. Staff nurse in charge. They'd have met for sure. <sighs> yes, but the latter, sir, that still points to Jennifer. Does it, Lewis? Uh, I admit I made that assumption. Who wouldn't? You think it was for Sue? Oh, I'm sure. That's what Jennifer confirmed in the note you took her. But why? What a stupid way to get in touch. Why didn't Crowther just ring her up? Uh, I tried it. It can't be done. There's a battle axe of a matron. Well, at home, then? Oh, too risky. It's so easy to listen to other people's telephone conversations, even one-sided ones. But town and gown offices are close to Lonsdale. But Jennifer would not. She did. About Bernard and Sue, that is. She was a willing go-between. Why? It suited Bernard well, of course. In these clandestine affairs, you sometimes need to snatch opportunities at short notice, take advantage of Mrs Crowther's unexpected absence, you know, things like that. You know what the post's like in these parts? But Jennifer wouldn't see Sue, not until the evening anyway. Wrong, Lewis. They often met for lunch. The cafe by the fire station there identified Sue from the photo she gave me. And... Jennifer, was she happy to be involved? They had some sort of pact, I imagine. I'm told women, and men too for that matter, enjoy talking to someone else about their conquests. Jennifer passed on the notes. Sue cleared out of the house on Wednesdays to give Jennifer a free run with Palmer. Tit for tat. That's amazing. You get an answer to that, sir. <laughs> Hardly. Luck, really. The one piece we had in this case. Just a name on a register. That's all you had. Oh, not at all. Jennifer, I was sure, was having an affair with someone. Why else all the lies about what she was doing on Wednesday? And all the other lies. To protect Sue. Jennifer? Protect anyone else? Oh, <laughs> not her. Now she didn't know about Sue. Nor what happened that night, I'm sure of that now. She just lied to protect herself. Her affair. And I couldn't imagine Jennifer bestowing her favours without advantage. Palmer was a reasonable bet. Her boss... Her career prospects were much enhanced, I'm sure. He didn't deny it. He wasn't in a position to, really. The landlady at Begbrook remembered him well. She was there, then. Like she said, they it, both were. It was a regular rendezvous of theirs. You see, Jennifer used to run Sue in her car to these meetings with Bernard. Then she'd meet Palmer for a drink somewhere before they went back to the empty love nest. A mutually satisfactory arrangement. Until she had the puncture? Yes, even then, if Sue hadn't been so impatient, so eager to meet her lover, if she'd waited while the kindly neighbour changed the tyre... And if she hadn't met Sylvia at the bus stop, and if Mrs Jarman had been right about the last bus to Woodstock... And if... And if... And if... And there's no doubt at all, sir. None, I'm afraid... As soon as I showed Mrs. Jarman the photo, she identified Sue straight away. No doubt at all. And now, sir? The paperwork, Lewis. We'll have to make a start. Oh, right, sir, I get on with it. You know something, Lewis? What, sir? I'm not surprised you didn't fool Mrs. Crowther. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you need. 
No, nothing. I mustn't come again. You know that. Inspector? Yes? Perhaps you can't believe me. And it doesn't matter now anyway. But I loved you. Goodbye, Sue. Last Bus to Woodstock by Colin Dempster was dramatised for radio by Melvin Jones with Andrew Bird as Inspector Morse and Christopher Douglas as Sergeant Lewis. The rest of the cast was Sue, Sarah Jane Bickerton, Jennifer, Deborah Cranston, Bernard, Alan Thompson, Peter and Palmer, Graham Blocky, Margaret, Maggie Tarver, Mrs. Jarman and the Matron, Patricia Gibson, John Sanders, John Hartock, and Sylvia Kay, Deborah Appleby. Other parts were played by Deborah Appleby, Graham Blocky, and John Hartock. The programme, which came from Bristol, was directed by Brian Miller. <laughs>